This program contains five history lesson starters, each exploring a different aspect of Victorian society. You can download supporting notes for each clip from the Teachers TV website. of unruly behaviour will not be tolerated in my classroom. You should all count yourselves lucky to be attending school when so many other children your age must go to work. Today we shall continue with our usual study of the three R's. Reading, writing and arithmetic. To begin with, let us continue with our literacy. Read. It is very important that children respect their elders. Children must carry themselves in grace at all times, considering God and their fellow man in all things they do. Children must keep themselves neat and hygi hyg hyg hygienic. The word is hygienic. Something you are not by the smell of you. Now get yourself into the corner and put on the dunce's hat and face the wall so we do not have to look at you. You will all now repeat the final sentence. Children must keep themselves neat and hygienic. Children must keep themselves neat and hygienic. Good, that will do. You will now copy down the final sentence from the chalkboard as writing practice. What on earth are you waiting for? Have you forgotten how to write? Then use the tools in front of you! All right, children, we will continue with our writing after break. You may make your way outside in an orderly fashion. Exciting, isn't it? Just think, in under a week the Great Exhibition will finally be open. Personally, I feel like I've seen the whole thing already. What we're staying up day and night printing off these catalogues. It's the Queen's husband, you see, Prince Albert. He wanted to prove to the world that Britain was top dog in, well, everything really. So he's collected together hundreds of examples of miracles of the modern age. There are so many of them that they had to build that crystal palace to show them all off in. Take this one, for example. This is Frederick Bakewell's copying telegraph. You write your message out on a sheet of tin foil and it spins round and round on this drum. Clockwork moves the arm across your message and it's scanned using electricity. The signal can then reproduce your handwritten message many miles away on another machine. Some people are calling it a facsimile, or a fax machine for short. Now, it's all very well showing that Britain is leading the way in modern communications, but in my opinion, if you really want to demonstrate how powerful you are, there's no better way of doing it than showing that you own the world's largest diamond. That is the Koh-i-Noor brought back from India only last year and presented to the Queen by the son of the Maharaja himself. Okay, 
So not all of the exhibits are this grand, and some are more than a little strange. For example, this chap, George Jennings, has built, and wait for this, toilets in the retiring rooms at the exhibition. And get this, anyone can pay to go and use them. I know, public toilets. For a penny, you get a clean seat, a towel, a comb, and a shoe shine. Everyone's talking about wanting to come to the Great Exhibition just so they can spend a penny. Speaking of which, I've got to nip out back to the privy before I finish this printing. This may not be the Great Exhibition, but at least there's plenty of paper. Oh, there you are. I wondered where you'd got to. Oh, you can put those bandages down there on the table next to you. It calms down a bit here in the evenings. The doctors have to stop at some point. Nevertheless, there's still work to be done. I suppose you want to know what I do. Everybody does since that article in the Times. A friend of mine posted it to me. I have it here. Now, what did they say? She may be observed alone, with a little lamp in her hand, making her solitary rounds. The lady with the lamp. That's what they're calling me back home, apparently. Oh, I don't know what they think the lamp does to help these poor souls. What they need is proper medical attention. We lost 4,000 during the winter, just in this hospital alone. That's if you can call it a hospital. The tragic thing is that in most cases it's not their wounds that kill them. It's the illnesses they contract while they're lying here. Oh. Typhus, typhoid, cholera, dysentery. They kill ten times what the war does. And we just don't know how to treat them. I've encouraged some of my patients to try the spa the locals go to. You know, like a bathhouse for sick people. I've been making notes on their recovery and I really think it helps. I keep thinking I ought to write my notes down properly in a book. I'd call it Notes on Nursing. It has a ring to it, don't you think? Mind you, I don't suppose anyone would actually take me seriously. Women from my background are supposed to get married and have children, not work abroad in the middle of a war. Now, are you going to stand there staring or are you going to help me? We're supposed to be keeping this place clean and... Oh, dear. There are another 50 of these bedpans to empty before morning. Come on. My first ship was a paddle steamer called the Great Western, constructed of wood. And a year later, the Great Western Steamship Company asked me to design another ship, and I came up with this. The SS Great Britain was nicknamed the Leviathan when they were building it, because it was huge. And it was the first ship in the world to be constructed from iron, with a screw propeller. The whole thing was built by hand. Every rivet hole, it really set the precedent for ships after that. Many people thought I was an idiot to build a ship from iron because they immediately thought it was going to sink. Um, but I knew as long as it was constructed along the lines of a ship and it was airtight, of course it would float. So it's a completely modern experiment, this ship. This ship was purely built originally as a, as a luxury liner for first and second class travel. Um, so it was built to take people in, in considerable style across the Atlantic. But often if you were a first class passenger you could have chilled champagne whenever you wanted, 12 course dinners. If you were poor it was much harder. You'd write letters, maybe read books, or, or try, and, try and amuse yourself as best you could, because the tedium of it was unbelievable. The S engine was the largest and most powerful on the planet. 
in 1845. It was a 1,000 horsepower engine and it weighed 380 tonnes of wrought iron. This ship went on to have a 92-year working career, which is astonishing. And from this ship, you could say that every modern ship is descended. It was the first of its kind, and every ship in the world today owes something to this one. Since I cannot, dear sister, with you hold communion, I'll give you a sketch of our life in the Union. But how to begin? I don't know, I declare. Let me see. Well, the first is our grand bill of fare. We've skilly for breakfast, at night, bread and cheese, and we eat it and then go to bed, if you please. Two days in the week, we have puddings for dinner. And two, we have broth. So like water, but thinner. Two, meat and potatoes. Of this, none to spare. One day, bread and cheese. And this is our fare. And now then, my clothes I will try to portray. They're made of coarse cloth, and the colour is grey. My jacket and waistcoat don't fit me at all. My shirt is too short, or I am too tall. My shoes are not pairs, but of course I have to. They're down at heel, my stockings are blue. A sort of scotch bonnet we wear on our heads. And I sleep in a room where there are 14 beds. Some are sleeping, some are snoring, some talking, some playing, some fighting, some swearing, but very few pray. I sometimes look up at the bit of blue sky, high over my head with a tear in my eye, surrounded by walls that are too high to climb, confined like a felon without any crime. Not a field, nor a house, nor a hedge I can see. Not a plant, not a flower, nor a bush, nor a tree. But I'm getting, I find, too pathetic by half. And my object was only to cause you to laugh. So my love to yourself, your husband, your daughter, I'll drink to your health with a tin of cold water. Thank you.